Great peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, but my peace. You see, it is as evident as can be that this so-called, or apparent, let's not say so-called, but this apparent turmoil, which has disturbed the outer world, has come into this world to bring about either doubt or fear for those things or conditions that exist in our outer world. And tonight, if you really want to carry away the sense of the new message, the new mission, try while you are here to drop all sense of thought or concern for whatever it is that is disturbing in the outer picture. Now, it isn't easy for me to say this any more than it is easy for you to hear it. But the desire in the hearts of most of us right now is for some solution to an outer problem, to a problem of human existence, to something that is disturbing us in the world of health or wealth. Most of us at this very moment are concerned about something in our human affairs, and we are seeking a solution to it. There's nothing wrong about that. The solution must appear because harmony must appear, but we will fail to find the solution as long as we are concerned with the problem and the solution of the problem. Watch what I say to you, that we can have the answer to that problem tonight. If we can sufficiently drop the concern for it in the realization of this. Now hear it well. My peace, that is Christ's peace. This is Jesus speaking. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give us, not the peace of physical health or physical wealth, not the satisfaction of personal desires, but something far transcending that. Something that when we experience it, wipes out entirely the need for human demonstration. That is what we want to achieve here tonight, this very evening I'm speaking of, this very evening. In this next hour, we can, and many of us must, drop this concern, lose the concern, for whatever it is, whatever the nature of it may be, that we brought with us into this room. And we can't do it humanly. We can't tell it to get out or get behind me, Satan. But we can open our consciousness at this minute to a realization of my peace. Now, watch this as it flows through your consciousness. Watch as you open yourself, even with a question, what is this, my peace? What is the spiritual nature 
of peace? What is the spiritual nature of harmony? Now you will remember that in order to be that man whose being is in Christ, we must have come to the end of the road of seeking and searching and come to some measure of awareness that we have already arrived. And in order to do that, we relax. Relax from every sense of desire of achievement or desire of demonstration in the feeling that the presence of God dissolves all false appearances. The presence of God is a peace be still to every type of storm. There are more storms than ever were on the seas. There are more storms in our thought than oceans ever caused. But the Christ is a peace be still to every form of storm, to every form of discord, to every nature of inharmony. Peace be still. My peace. My peace. Christ's peace. The peace that passes understanding is the peace that comes with the realization of I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. If you walk through the waters, I will be with thee. Whithersoever thou goest, I will go. Thy people will be my people. Never, never. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Whithersoever thou goest, I will go. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will walk with you. I will be with you. I will be in you. And I will be through you. Fear not. Fear not. I am with you. the depth of this inner silence comes forth the healing waters. Those waters that spring into everlasting life. Out of the depth of this silence comes the spirit which appears as our cloud by day and our pillar of fire by night. Out of the depth of this silence comes the safety and the security that always follows the peace.
peace that God gives. The reason for peace is that it has nothing to fear. While there is something to fear, there is no peace. Once the peace has descended upon us, the treatment is complete. The reason for disturbance, for sickness, for lack has gone. The feeling of peace is a successful treatment. And there is no successful treatment until the peace that passeth understanding descends upon us. All prayer, all treatment, all communion with God is only for one purpose, not to make any kind of demonstration, but to achieve for us this sense of peace or well-being. That realization that though I am with you unto the end of time, though I am always with you. Let us have that sense of the divine presence you will have the completed treatment. Let us fail to achieve this sense of peace, and the treatment is not a treatment. In my presence, the fire does not burn, and the water does not drown. In my presence, the storms do not rage. The power of Christ is the answer to every form of inharmony. The feeling of the presence is in itself the treatment. Let us understand this now. Let us understand this. Our problem is at an end, not when we think we have found a solution, but when we have felt this inner peace. There is this bond between all of us, the bond that brought us together at this moment in this place. That bond is the love of God. That love of God is our mutual at one It makes us at one with God and at one with each other so that the flow of God to and through any one of us is instantaneously the flow of God through everyone within range of our being. One with God is a majority, and because we are one with God and one with each other, all that the Father is showing forth is manifesting as our individual experience, but the individual experience of each one of us. Whatever is true spiritually of one of us in demonstration is now true of all of us because of our oneness in each other through our oneness in God. And so the peace be still that is of God that touches the soul of one of us, touches the soul of each of us.
the solution of the outer problem is automatically taken care of in the realization of this inner peace. The peace within produces the peace without. The activity of Christ within results in the spilling of the wave without. The peace be still within appears as the daily manna without. The realization of this divine presence, this feeling of divine love through us, is the temple of God in which we live and move and have our being even when we are out in the world. The Word of God is our abiding place. And even when we move in and out of this world, we are abiding in this Word if we feel. We take just this moment for the feeling of this divine presence. I will never leave you, nor forsake you, but you must abide in me. You must abide in my word. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I will be with you whithersoever thou goest, but you must turn within to me. You must make me your abiding place. You must take my word into your mouth, into your consciousness. You must take the remembrance of my presence with you wherever you go. I will never leave you nor forsake you, but be sure that you do not leave the word out of your mouth. Recognize the divine presence in the heart and soul of all those you meet, friend or foe. Recognize that the individual soul is the abiding place of God. That the world itself doesn't know it is of no concern to you or to me. They too will awaken as we recognize God in the midst of them. In this work that we are doing tonight, I want to reveal to you a principle of healing, of protecting, and of supply. But I want to reveal to you a principle that will operate without your taking thought, without your making statements without your doing heavy mental work, without your begging or pleading or beseeching of God, 
I would like to show you a principle of healing that operates completely without what the metaphysical world calls treatment. In this principle you will find that the healing principle is a state of peace, a state of peace that you achieve, that I achieve, we all achieve, through the realization of the presence. That is this form of treatment, just the realization of the presence just the feeling of a state of peace. Now, as we went into this work tonight, I'm sure you felt the agitation in the air, in the atmosphere, or in many cases you yourselves felt ill at ease, not at peace. Now, I want you to remain here and abide in this until a sense of peace steals over you, a sense of peace that will come through only one recognition. I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I, in the midst of you, and mighty. My presence will go before you to make the crooked places straight. I will go before you to prepare a place for you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, not with human honors or human wealth, but a peace transcending man's understanding. The peace that comes when the Christ is enthroned in our consciousness as the source of our health and the source of our supply. No other peace can be lasting. Only the peace that comes as the Christ is enthroned as the source of your good and as the only power in your experience. I live, yet not I. Christ liveth my life. I can do all things through Christ. Christ is my strength, Christ is my redeemer, my savior. Christ is the law of resurrection unto my body, unto my business. Christ is my bread and wine and water, not to be achieved, not to be earned, Christ never leaves us nor forsakes us. Therefore the bread and the water and the wine and the meat are always here within our own being. I am with you and I am the bread of life. I am with you and I am the meat. I am with you and I am the wine and I am the water and I am the resurrection. I am life eternal and I will never leave you. I, life eternal, will never leave you nor forsake you. My peace I give unto you. No longer will you live by bread, but by my presence. My presence will be sufficient for you. You will no longer seek for anything except for me. 
and you will know that in finding me, the Christ, you will have found your peace, your security, your confidence, your reward, your health, strength, eternality. Is this realization of peace within? My fulfillment is always now from within. I have crossed out the belief that my help must come from without. I have crossed out the belief that anything or anyone external is necessary to the realization of my eternal harmony. And all that has come about through the feel of a peace within, not due to anything without, but due to a divine presence within. The divine presence has always been there. How many times, however, when we have felt this outer discord, have we sat patiently for 10 or 15 minutes to let this peace descend upon us? And in failing to do that, we have missed the way. Now when the storms threaten without, now when the waves dash against our ship, let us remember this experience. It may take five minutes for the peace to descend. It may take 15 minutes. There are obstinate beliefs in this world. But if we're patient and know what it is we're waiting for, the assurance from within, that's all we're waiting for, the assurance from within. The treatment isn't complete until the assurance has come within. Lo, I am with you always. Fear not, I am with you. See how easy it is to rest in the deep silence, to relax the world care. Oh, but you say yes, but when we return to the world, aren't the troubles still there? Not for you and not for me. A thousand may feel them at your left and ten thousand at your right. They will not come nigh you as you dwell in this deep silence. It may take practice, 
But whenever this agitation comes, as you certainly must have felt it here tonight, whenever that agitation comes to your thought, find a place to rest and relax and wait, wait for this peace to descend upon you. As this peace descends upon you inwardly, you may be assured, whatever the name or nature of the storm without, it also is being stilled. Isn't it easy in this atmosphere to say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. All these disturbers of the world. Isn't it easy to forgive them and realize it's only because of their ignorance of this peace, just as we were ignorant of it half hour ago. Nothing can enter the deep silence that defileth or maketh a lie. By this you can see that we were not disturbed by our own fears or doubts or problems. When we came into this room, we were disturbed by the world's fears and doubts and problems. We were merely receiving stations for the world's troubles. If they were our troubles, they'd still be troubling us. They never were our troubles, even when they reflected themselves in our affairs. feel this, who are touched by the Divine Presence, will want to maintain it always. And there is a way. It is a way of frequent silence and frequent meditation, frequent opening of thought to the Christ, to the realization of the Divine Presence. At the first flurry of an entrance from the world into your consciousness, retire into this. Even while at your work, Be not afraid, it is I. Thank you, thank you. I haven't entirely recovered from the effects of this morning's class.
one more class like that, <coughs> and I'll take up permanent residence on cloud number eight. We have a beautiful class body. And always remember, those of you who engage in this work, if you permit your classes to be formed by the Spirit, they will always include those who can lift the class and the teacher to greater heights. But if the class is brought together by human means, it may mean very little in spiritual development. And for a living example of that, let me ask you now to relax. Relax and uh, Let thought get quiet inside in the realization of a presence that is to bring you fulfillment. As a person, you no longer need to desire anything or to want anything or to acknowledge a need for anything. As a person now, you can relax and be assured that there is a presence in the midst of you, a light, a being, and its function is to fulfill your entire experience, to fill it full of spiritual good. Its function in the midst of you is to know what things you have need of and to provide them. There is no need now for you to acknowledge any lack. There is no need for you to acknowledge any need. The stillness and the silence is God's abiding place. In the stillness and in the silence, God lives and expresses and fulfills and reveals and unfolds And its world appears to you in forms of harmony, grace, and beauty. If you are as a little child, if you are relaxed, if you have given up the personal sense of I at this moment, if only for this moment, to the place where it is almost as if you were looking over your own shoulder and watching God appear, 
just as you might watch a sunset or a moonrise and yet not reach out and try to help them. Just passively be a beholder. Or sometimes when you see a beautiful flower and the first thought that comes into your mind is, and uh, a fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Have you ever looked at a beautiful flower or a mountain scene, sunrise or sunset, and had that thought flash right into your mind, and a fool hath said in his heart, there is no God? Well, that's because you knew that only God could make a tree, as the poet told us. You knew that only God could fashion such a sunset, create such a mountain setting. And you knew that it was your joy and your pleasure and your privilege to behold God revealing itself in these beautiful forms and colors. And that's all you were doing. You were beholding God reveal himself to you in these wondrous varieties of beauty and grace. And so in this moment of relaxed selfhood, where you know now after these weeks of instruction that I can of my own self do nothing. It truly is the Father within me that doeth the works. In this moment of supreme stillness and silence, where the human mind is not trying to make a demonstration, where the human mind has gone even a step further and acknowledges no lack, no limitation, no need, just feels that I am home in thee. I and my Father are one. I rest in thee. I feel the peace that passeth understanding. I know the glow of the Divine Presence. He that fashioned thee shall preserve thee. He shall be a light unto thy feet. shall go to prepare a place for thee. Because his is the kingdom and the power and the glory. This is his kingdom, not yours. This is his power, not yours. This is his glory, not mine. as if we of our own understanding or power had raised up this man. No, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob had done this thing. <clears throat> and if the Spirit of God dwell in you, that same Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead will quicken also your mortal bodies. How may you know if the Spirit of God dwells in you? If you can be relaxed, if you can be at peace, if you can rest, rest. in quietness 
and in confidence shall be my strength. Not in mental work, not in treatment, in quietness and confidence shall be my strength. still and let me show you the Father's glory. Let me show you how the Father can come to you revealing health, revealing harmony, revealing peace, and all without you doing a thing, not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you a comforter, even the Spirit of Truth. And it will be all things to you. Rest from your mental labors. Rest from your doubts and from your fears. No one ever fears who has tasted or touched God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. Now how could David fear since he had already learned that Thou art with me. If in this moment of stillness and of silence you feel even the tiniest touch of the Christ, you will never again fear though you walk through the desert or through the wilderness or through the waters, or through the flames, or through the valley of the shadow of death, you will never again fear because the remembrance of this little touch will be a reassurance that before Abraham was, I was right there with you. And lo, I am with you unto the end of the world. I will never leave you nor forsake you. As I was with Abraham, so I will be with you. As I was with Moses in the Red Sea, in the wilderness, so I will be with you. Though the waters pass over you, they will not drown you. I don't ask you to believe the signs. I don't ask you to believe even if you experience a healing. I don't ask you to believe even if your mail is filled with money tomorrow. I will only ask you to believe if you feel a touch within you, the presence, the light, the life. Remember, if your thought wants to wander, 
just remind it that it is in quietness and confidence that you find your peace, not in your mental wanderings, not in trying to remember a lot of truths, not in trying to fulfill some human need, but in quietness and confidence. <laughs>